All right. Good evening, everybody. It seems like it's been so long since we've had a uh, a Zoom lecture, but uh, I am excited that all of you have uh, are visiting us tonight. And again, in uh, just missing the first part of the Miami Dolphins game, which will start at eight twenty. So I hope you all are enjoying yourselves wherever you are. I know more and more people are headed back to Glen Eagles. And um, you know, the good thing is that my budget was approved. So we are going to be doing a lot of the Sunday stay at home lecture series. So if there's anything that you would like to see um, throughout our season, by all means, just shoot me an email or stop me um, when you see me at the club. So tonight, I am excited. We have Dr. Steve Johnson. And um, the reason I, or how I found, I'm going to remove my spotlight. So, but the reason how I found him was I was simply searching for people to lecture about South Florida and the wildlife. Uh, I know one of my member, one of our members wanted me to find someone to talk about the birds. And I just went from there and there. And it, it's great. You know, we had someone talk about the turtles. So I Googled all over and I found Dr. Steve Johnson. And um, at the time um, he was available to speak to us on Zoom, but possibly we can get him to come all the way down here from, well, I forgot exactly where he yeah. lives. He'll tell us all about that. Um, so anyways, I appreciate all of you coming in. He'll ask everybody whether or not we like snakes or not. And um, I personally am scared of them. They get, they make me cringe when I see them. I scream when I walk my dog and I see them. And, um, but you know, facing our fears. So this is another reason why we're talking about snakes tonight. So everybody, let's go ahead and um, welcome Dr. Steve Johnson. Thanks for coming. Hey everybody. My audio working? Yes. All right, great. Well, I'm happy to be able to speak with you uh, tonight. And uh, as Tammy said, we're talking about snakes, but we can talk about anything tonight. And I'm happy to talk about other wildlife. You name it. I'll put something together. And I've, I'm a native Floridian. And so I've been, uh, you know, been here a lot of a lot of a lot of years. And I know a lot about turtles and manatees and alligators and all kinds of stuff. So today we're going to focus on snakes, but if the conversation goes elsewhere, that's fine with me. So uh, since there's only, let me see, there's 15 of us. Uh, I think we'll just do, so I can figure know who you are. I'm going to do, we're just going to do some quick introductions if you're okay with that. If you're my student, you're like, oh boy, the professor wants to do introductions, but we're going to do that. And Tammy, I'll let you choose who goes next. Uh, you can see on your screen, but I, on my eye, I see uh, somebody named Charles, so maybe he would be next, but I'll just say who I am and where I'm from and what interests me. So I'm Steve right, Johnson. So, uh, oh, sorry. Go right. ahead. And I'm Tammy. And then we'll just go to the, to the right of me. I have Charles. So Charles, do you want to say who you are? Yeah, I'm, I'm Charlie Cap, and I really, really do dig snakes. I, I'm yeah. actually afraid of, I'm afraid of them too. Like I would, would not be comfortable picking one up not even non-venomous harmless but all right I, I just i'm really fascinated that's all cool all right. thank you for sharing me. so to the uh, right i hope people aren't dropping off just because i'm going to you know don't drop off <laughs> uh, mark and ruthie do you want to go ahead and tell us who you are and what about your fear or you love of snakes yeah, we can't hear you, but you should be unmuted. Unmute, yeah. Yeah, she's unmuted, but it, again, it's kind of tough. I, we can't. Can you hear us, Mark I, and Ru Ruthie? But we can't hear you, so I don't know if your microphone is enabled. So that, that's sometimes. No, all right. Well, you can tell us in the settings. chat. So, um. So, Mr. Robin? I uh, enjoy snakes uh, of all kinds. I'm a mountain hiker and a scuba diver, so I've seen uh -huh. snakes up high, down low, uh, rattlesnakes in Arizona and out west, and and uh, and all kinds of things that I don't even know what they are underwater. Uh, I respect them, uh, but I'm fascinated by them. I've never had any problems with any of them, uh, and so I wanted to hear more about them. Cool. From you. 
And later you said you were gonna talk about other subjects. I was interested in, I think we're kind of unique in Florida having alligators and crocodiles yes. together. I don't know of any other place in the world. And so I thought maybe if you get to the end of the snake presentation, you could touch on that, what the okay. difference is between alligators and crocodiles and why we happen sure. to have this, this unique uh, presence of both together here. Thank you. Okay. All right. Remind me of that, but we can certainly talk about that. Well done. Right. And to the right, I have iPhone 4. <laughs> 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 I'm going to ask you to unmute and then you'll know it's uh, you I am trying to get to talk to. I see that gentleman there on iPhone 4. I, know, I do too. But <laughs> well, we'll just keep on going. As long as you can hear us, that's the most important thing. Okay, so Mrs. North and North, it's up to you. Unmute yourself and tell us what you think about snakes. Yeah, I'm not particularly interested in snakes at all. <laughs> but um, I trust Tammy. And if she thought it was a good idea, then I'm willing to learn. Cool. <laughs> Great attitude. Yes, indeed. All right, so Barbara Lowenfish, are the, the, you on? That Ruth who just said that, who she's a little afraid, but she wants to learn, very important to me. That is the target audience. And I think that's who we have here tonight. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it was from Anne. Okay, so oh, sorry, Barbara. Anne, bad. Sorry, Anne. So is it, is it Barbara? I don't know, Barbara Lowenfish? I can't tell with Barbara. No, I but... think it's Barbara Corn. Okay, oh, she's got two, so. So we have Barbara's. Uh, okay, wait a minute. So I have two of you. Um, you have me, 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 me. I'm going to, yeah, I might. Okay, so I'm going to um, take you off of your phone. So, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'm gonna, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. That's okay. Okay, so now you're on your iPad, so you can talk to us. Okay, well, now I can't get in. Hello. No, you're here. Hello. We just oh, we're well, here. I don't have a visual. Duh. Okay. You can't see us? No. <laughs> All right. Well, tell us and then reconnect. Okay. But... I uh I I don't dislike snakes. I'm not afraid of them. I used to volunteer at the Okahili Nature Center and I used to have to take them out of their cages and clean the cages and do all this kind of stuff, but I'm just interested in them because really most people think they're slimy and horrible and they're really not. They're quite they are not. So I'm interested in what you have to say. Okay, cool. All right. So Barbara, re um, so, oh, there we are. We see you. All right. Well, I don't, I see you, Tammy. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay, perfect. We're good. All right. Okay. So the next up is, I know you're not Rosalind, so. Oh, let me unmute yourself. Did we lose him? Oh, no. See, I was afraid we don't want to lose other. Okay, ask to unmute. <laughs> there we go. I like the sea turtle motif behind you. Okay, now this is somebody else. Oh, that was that's Barbara. So now we have to get Rosalind. Click on the yes to unmute yourself. Nope, still can't hear you, sir. You work on unmuting yourself. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Kavanaugh. Keep on trying to unmute yourself. Okay. Um, I'm not afraid of garter snakes. I see them a lot here around Glen Devon and Glen Eagles. And they're, I, I like them because they're good for the garden. And they take care of things that we don't want in our garden. But I am... Uh, very afraid and respectful of all the venomous snakes and some other snakes too, such as the python. <laughs> and so uh, I'm willing to learn more and how to deal with them. Okay, so I see iPhone 4 is unmuted. So, sir? Um, the gentleman in the black uh, shirt? Oh. All right. And you some well, we have to do some more Zoom practicing as long as they can hear us. Okay. Right. And Miss well, and Rob, that okay. gives, that and Bobby gives, Buckner, did you want to tell us about your snakes and why you're here? 
Okay. All right. Well, then let's let's go ahead and begin. Steve, you got enough of our people? Perfect. Well, that gives me an idea what everybody's sort of their viewpoints are and everything. And it, it, it varies for people who like, I just want to hear about, you know, venomous snakes to people who are, are, you know, sort of scared about snakes. So let's just start out with as I forget who said it, but to start out with snakes are uh, they're one of the groups of reptiles. So rep reptiles include turtles and snakes and lizards and crocodilians and reptiles have dry, scaly skin. They're not slimy. So the whole oh, snakes are slimy, you know, snakes are cool to the touch if you were to hold one because they're uh, they're uh, ectotherms or they're cold blooded. So their temperature is based on the, you know, the environmental temperature. So the time this this time of year, snakes will be getting less active because it's getting cooler. Like up here in Gainesville, I'm, I'm in Gainesville and it's in going to get into the upper the lower 60s, maybe the upper 40s tonight. Down in Central or South Florida, you know, you guys will be warmer. So snakes are active. They can be active any time of the year. And we've got a lot of snakes in Florida. We've got about 50 species. And most of them are not, they're not, they're no harm at all to anybody. They're not, they're not venomous. They're not going to, you know, they might scare you. But uh, I will, I will, one, one a piece of advice I was given by a, a, a mentor early on in my outreach career was that, if you let's say you have a snake in your yard and you're sort of worried about it and you're not, you know, you're not sure it's like, oh, OK, I'm not and try not don't kill it. But, you know, give it a name, you know, call it Bob or whatever you're going to call your snake. And then you're going to wonder, where is Bob? Where is Joe? What Or, you know, Bobby, whatever you want to call your snake. So any animal, give it a name and then learn more about it and then share the information that we get. So I'll say I understand well, I think I understand why people are afraid of snakes because they're probably taught to be that afraid of snakes when they're young. And then even if you're not taught that way, I mean, there's an animal that's long and thin. It's got it's got no arms, no legs and no feet. So it's, you know, and the eyes don't blink. You know, that snakes don't have a, you know, an eyelid that opens and closes. And when they're sleeping, their eye, it looks like it's wide open. Uh, so I can understand how snakes are kind of alien to people, but they're a really important part of our environment. They eat rodents. They, you know, some snakes eat other snakes. They're really, really unique. They're really unique creatures. And I think the more people learn about them and more, the more you know about them, the more you're going to, you know, you're going to appreciate them, you know. And uh, so the bottom line is snakes are much more of a help to us than they are a harm to us. And I'll show you some some numbers here in, in my uh, my uh, my talk. So. So what I have is, so I'm a, I'm a professor at University of Florida, and I, I teach a lot of courses on amphibians and reptiles, and I do outreach. I talk about snakes, all kinds of things. So this is this is what I love to do. So I'm so, I'm so fortunate that I get to, you know, my job is like to be a kid, you know, to tell people about about really cool animals. So the talk I have today is sort of a standard one I have on venomous snakes of Florida, how to identify them and how to be safe around them. Uh, and if at any point you're like, oh, let's, you know, you're done. We don't want to talk about your slides anymore. We can talk about anything you want. So do not feel feel free or do feel free to either maybe not the chat, but just unmute yourself and yell or raise your hand or do something to get my attentions or Tammy's attention. And we'll, you know, we can let this is for you. We can let it go anywhere. Like I said, I'm, I'm you, you guys experience is really important to me. And I want to share what I know about snakes and want to answer your questions and then Hopefully this will pique your interest and we can talk about other things in another presentation. So uh, guess with that, if everybody's cool with it, we'll start with the, the slides that I have. Or if anyone wants to, you know, ask a question, let's do that. Let's open up the open it up right now. Does anybody have a, any questions about snakes or anything else? Maybe it's pythons. You know, I'm going to focus on Florida's native snakes. We don't have any non-native uh, venomous snakes that are here in the staff. Here in the staff. Go ahead. Go I ahead. Some. I heard some. Anybody? Anybody? Nope. I think it's. Nope, I think it's. Um. I think it was just an echo. Yeah, that okay. was me echoing. Okay. All right. So you can share your screen and. Yep. Let's, let's do that. We do. And again, we can stop at any point in this. So. All right. So. You see my screen, Tammy? Yes. Okay. So there it is. Now I will say that. I am more than happy to follow up with any questions about snakes or anything. If you're like, oh, I'm not sure what this is. I saw this lizard. I saw this frog. If you, I don't, 
a description won't do me a lot of good, but if you can send me a digital, a decent digital picture, I can respond to that. And I like frogs, Cuban tree frogs. You guys have a lot of Cuban tree frogs down your way. And I uh, respond to a lot of emails about those. So anything wildlife related, related that has a backbone, amphibians, reptiles, birds, or mammals that are from Florida or elsewhere, I can, I can identify it for you, tell you a bit about it, or I know someone who can. So anyway, so we're going to kind of follow through with the, the, uh, the, the presentation now. So, oh, that's an old one. We don't have to do that. So introduction to snakes. And then there's not, you'll see, there's not that many venomous snakes species in Florida. There's very, there's relatively few of them, but this one, the cotton mouth, is often confused with our native water snakes, which are in the science, their scientific name is Nerodia. So every organism has a scientific name that's two parts. It's the genus and the species and the, the genus, the generic part is the, these water snakes. And people often mis mistake and persecute harmless water snakes for the cottonmouth. And we'll we'll talk about that because there may be some some stories of cottonmouths chasing people. We'll talk about safety, safety and I'll give you a little hint on, or a little, little uh, you know, slide on resources. So Florida is, for those of you who aren't a fan of snakes, maybe you're like, oh my God, we have so many snakes. We do have a lot of snakes in Florida, roughly 50 species of native snakes in Florida. And they range from, uh, from this little thing called a pine wood snake, that, that snake is no bigger than a pencil. They go from there, the largest native snake we have is going to be the eastern indigo snake, which is an endangered species. Now, I don't have a photograph of it, photograph of it here. It's an endangered. It's declined a lot because its habitat has been developed for people, run over on roads, and people have collected it for the pet industry. So we've got these little puny things, pine wood snakes and several other ones that are really small. Again, no bigger than a pencil. And then we have the larger ones. And there's all these intermediate sizes, like the eastern hognose snake, this snake spreads out its uh its neck it's it's colloquially called a puffing adder but it's just it's it's trying to bluff it when it, uh, when a predator's there those those snakes feed on toads that's their specialty they have large teeth in the back of their jaw that punctures the toad if a snake grabs a frog a frog will in, it will inflate itself with air so it's tougher to handle by the snake and it will pop it that way and then we have the corn snake or the red rat snake, great climbers, these the snakes in this group, and uh, one of the more common snakes. And then I heard somebody mention the, the garter snake, eastern garter snake. They get their name because they have a pattern like on a, a woman's garter that she would put around her thigh. It's got that checkerboard pattern. So we've got a whole lot of snakes in Florida, but most of them are not venomous, all right? And they're important. They should be here. The snakes have been here long before us. They, uh, they're, they're, they're predators and they're prey. So they eat all kinds of things, rodents, insects, frogs, fish, as you can see in the upper left. But in turn, they are preyed upon by things like uh, hawks and uh, birds of prey, alligators, uh, herons, great blue herons. So they're really important links in, uh, in, in food webs. And, you know, if the, as our various species go extinct, the sort of the web of life becomes less rich. And if you look at it like a like a quilt and people are like, oh, well, what if we lose this one species of snake? No big deal, right? Okay, yeah, maybe not. Life goes on. And then we lose another snake or we lose a bird or this or that. Eventually the integ integrity of that woven garment, if you think you're pulling out a, a, you know, a thread each time, it declines. And that's what would happen with our ecosystems. If species go extinct, they, they play important roles. And we, I could do a whole lecture on the, on basically the ecological value of, of wildlife, you know, as pollinators, you know, you think of honeybees, there's all kinds of native insects that are pollinators. So snakes do our, you know, they're, they're sort of free uh, rodent control, they're pest control. So really, really, really. And quick they, question, uh, can I ask a, a quick relevant question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. As far as predators of snakes, like, do we have, do bobcats take snakes or coyotes? I would think, I by, would and think large, by and large. Let me find the mute. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, like anything that's any any predator would probably take a snake. I know a coyote would, alligator would. I'm sure a bobcat would. I haven't seen this this firsthand, but I'm I know they would. You know, now if it's a really large snake or like let's say it's a big rattlesnake, rattlesnake the predator is not going to take, take it. But yes, they're you know if if. If an animal is hungry and a snake is out there, it's food just like, and they they would be easier to catch than like a bird or a mammal because 
often snakes first line of defense is they they're just hold still they'll think okay i'm gonna i'm gonna rely on camouflage to avoid this predator and uh and you know if a if, let's say it's a coyote or bobcat smells them then they you know they can attack them right there and snakes have no recourse but they can hide they can try to flee or they can strike to fight back but yeah so and birds, all kinds of things, you know, particularly if it's a small species of snake. So lots, lots of native predators. And then you have the, that's that snakes have lived with natural predation. You know, they've evolved with that for, you know, as long as snakes have been on the planet. But these other things that are new threats, like loss of habitat, you know, you guys are in South Florida, you see, you know, wood lots get developed, I'm sure all the time, a new shopping center, a new, you know, neighborhood goes in. I, I see that happen in Gainesville. And then you have with more development, you get more roads and snakes having go to go from, you know, crossing through, crossing across roads to get from one side of a habitat to another, they get run over and people will go out of the way to hit them. And then still it's these rattlesnake roundups, like I show in this little, this little sort of cartoon here, those still go on in parts of the country. They're, they're not as common anymore, but snake people still persecute snakes. Like most men are, I say many people, if they see a snake in their yard and they've got the ability to, they're going to kill it because they don't have the knowledge they need to have to realize, okay, the snake is no threat to me. It's not a threat to my family or my pets. And it's doing me a good biological, ecological service by being here. So snakes are persecuted, you know, so they've got all these strikes against them. And that's why, you know, that's why you guys are really important to me for being here because if I can just get, you know, one person out of this group that's in becomes an advocate or a greater advocate for, for snakes, then I, you know, I've succeeded. So you've probably maybe seen bumper stickers. If you haven't, there's bumper stickers that called give a snake a break. Basically mean stop if you see a snake in the road. Don't try to run it over. So lots of snakes in Florida. Uh, they do a lot of good for us, ecological services. They're misunderstood. And there are some snakes that are, you know, that we have to, that legitimately you have to be worried about, all right? But they're not that many. So this is not a talk about learning how to identify all the 50 species of snakes. It's kind of learning about how to identify the ones that are a potential threat to people or pets, all right? And we have six now. There's there's a, a, a colleague of mine that that did some genetic work and he just said, okay, the cotton mouth that's in Florida is really two species. But if we just sort of discount that, only six species that are venomous and of, you know, of, of health concern to people. And only four of those are in central and south Florida. So this one, the copperhead and the timber rattlesnake, the copperhead's only in those little small places in the panhandle. The timber rattlesnake does not get any far south by and large, than Gainesville, although there are some records uh, north of Orlando. But these other three species, the cottonmouth, the curl snake, the eastern diamondback, which has really declined a lot, and then the pygmy rattlesnake, those are the only ones you need to have to worry about. And probably when, where you guys are, this one, the cottonmouth, is still fairly common. Uh, and, you know, you just got to learn these sort of features of these. Now, the, oops, hang on, that was not supposed to happen. The, uh, the coral snake is in its own family. It's more related to cobras than it is these other ones. These five, and really we'll just focus on these three, are what are called uh, uh, pit vipers. They have a heat sensitive pit on their face. He froze. Oh no, <laughs> just when we get into the good part. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh did everybody freeze to Sammy? Yeah, they are. Just you. I think just you did, but okay. Continue. Our, oh, oh, there it is. Part. Yeah, all right, it says internet connection is So coral snake related to cobras. All right. It doesn't have things that come out. So really, just these four is all, you know, if you're worried about snakes, those are the only ones you have to worry about. The other ones you just yeah, or any of them, just leave them alone. But those are the only four that could pose any harm to you, your pets. And so if you can learn the traits of these so-called pit vipers, then you're in good shape because that differentiates them from all the other snakes. And again, this is Florida. Uh, so the pit vipers have a very thick, blocky head. The whole thing about when if, if a snake has a triangle-shaped head that it's venomous, that is wrong. There is... Just there's there's a lot of other features that you want to look at. It's this thick, blocky head. Just because it's a triangle head does not mean it's venomous and you need to worry about it. Or in many cases, people that, you know, that want to persecute it or kill it. Uh, 
So the pit vipers, thick head with an obvious neck, and I'll show you some more pictures. For their length, they're very heavy bodied. So they're not a, a skinny snake, these pit vipers. Their tail, now some of these features are, you know, you don't want to get that close, like the tail short, but this heat sensitive pit on the side of the head, you do not want to get that close to look. If you're not sure. There's one right there on that on that snake. Also these tail scales, but this uh, this thing about these keeled or these ridge scales, that's important for our, for our pit vipers. And then the eye, the band on the eye looks like it has a mask. So there's some features that I want to point out that you want to look for. And so here's a venomous pit viper, thick blocky head. There's that band from the eye to the corner of the mouth. There's a little heat sensitive pit right there between the eye and the nostril, but you're not going to look for this. If you're not sure what a snake is, best just to leave it alone. But this thing, these keeled scales, these are the scales on the snake's body that have, a, that have a ridge down the middle and make the snake look rough. All right. So those are the general pit viper features. Also, the teeth on a pit viper are they're, they're hollow. And they're on a, a blocky bone in the front of the head. And when the snake opens this, when a pit viper opens its mouth, those blocky bones swing forward and the fangs come forward with them. And they're hollow. And the coral snake type, they're, this is these are the scientific terms talking about their dentition. But the coral snake type, the fangs are fi fixed. They're much smaller. That does not mean a coral snake would have to bite and chew on you, though. It just means vipers are potentially dangerous or more dangerous because they can just swing up their fangs and they strike. But by and large, you're not going to see one. And if you don't get close enough and don't mess with one, you're not going to put yourself in danger. So that's the sort of the, the bottom line here. All right, here's coming back to the whole triangle head. All of these three snakes up here are non-venomous. Banded water snake, that's in, that's one of those Nerodia that I alluded to, not venomous. Common uh, garter snake, not venomous. This is a little rat snake. Very, all these are beneficial. That one eats rodents and stuff. Its head is wide. All of these snakes are in positions where they feel cornered and they feel threatened. And they're trying to do a bluff. It's like if you were, you know, running to somebody in the alley and you're like, you puff up. You're know, like, oh, you know, I'm not, I don't want to get in a fight here, but I just want to look bigger than I am. That's what these snakes are doing. So they have very, uh, their jaws are very mobile. They don't have a rigid skull like, like uh, people do or turtles do and they can flare out their bones in their jaw and make themselves look more intimidating, all right? And this is important. Important you guys are here listening to me, and this is an important message. If I can get nothing across to you today, it's that just because the head of a snake is triangular shaped does not mean it's venomous, all right? So that's really important. So we'll go through each of the ones briefly here, the individual, the uh, the species. So the cottonmouth moccasin, here's the... Uh, the range of the snake in green, so it can occur throughout Florida. The juveniles don't look like the adults. They're really beautiful snakes, well marked, but the adults are big and thick and girthy and heavy bodied, and they have these keels on the scales. So they're they're big, they're heavy bodied, got a lot of girth, and they look rough. All right. So that's one of the features. But this snake is all throughout Florida. And there are water snakes that look a lot like a cottonmouth that people mistake for them. And so all of these, these gorgeous snakes glistening in the light, you can see with the light on them, they are not venomous. These are not cottonmouths, they're native water snakes. The Florida green water snake, the brown water snake, and this one, the banded water snake is common throughout a lot of Florida. Now. It does look a lot like a cottonmouth because it's heavy bodied, it's dark, and these snakes also have those those rough keeled scales. But notice this one, the head's you know wide because it feels threatened. So they are often persecuted as cottonmouths. I can point out that again, it's a it's a subtle feature, but the on the lips of the of the banded water snake, you see these dark lines, so these these labial bars, so called. That's one way to tell. But this also underscores if you're not sure just leave it alone you don't don't mess with it and don't try to kill it so that's the that's the venomous you know the non-venomous water snakes that looked a lot like cottonmouths so we have a little quiz coming up and i don't know if it'd be a raise of hand or maybe we can let how about we put tammy on the spot tammy you're the one who tells us when i show you these pictures come up is it a venomous cottonmouth or is it one of these non-venomous water snakes all right okay so there, here's more on water snakes. 
All right, their face looks a little different. That one's got its head, you know, flattened out. Got the labial bars. This is, these are the southern water snakes. This is one that you guys could have near the coast. This is a salt marsh snake. And so there those are. And then these are cotton nuts, all right? So often head up, mouth agape, band, wide head, band from the eye to the back of the jaw. And they kind of, you know, they just look a little intimidating, I'll say. So those are the two. So you got, sorry, your water snakes and your cotton mouse. All right, ready? What do you mm -hmm. think that one is? Oh, oh, I have to, oh, that's a, that's a non-venomous. Yay, good job. That is a Nerodia or brown water snake. Many people think those are cotton mouse. So that's a, that's good, good, good job there. All right, what about this one? I almost gonna say, I couldn't even tell, but I, oh, with the fangs open, that's definitely venomous. Yeah, and so this one I forgot to point out. The name cottonmouth is because of the cottony mouth interior of the snake's mouth when its mouth is open as an intimidating thing. So good job. All right, here we go. Another one. Nerodia or cottonmouth? That's a cottonmouth. Totally. Heavy body, keeled scales, often of the you know the chin is up, black bar from the eye to the uh, to the to the jaw, and so good one. And that really thick body. All right. What about, would you? What about, sorry. Would you know that was a cotton mouth if it didn't have its head, just by looking at the body? You would know. You could. Yes. You could, because yes, you, because you, you you'd see the head, see and, the head and it would be, and, it would be thick, looking, and we would just see the overall thickness and girthiness of the snake. Okay. Next one. Oh, so that. One. What do you think? That's Tim? the one he was looking at. That's the one. That's, that's the one, that. and that's the one you can tell. So thick body, that's the same snake as I showed you before. Thick body, it'd be the short tail, but that heavy, thick body is, an, is a way to tell that. And then how about that one? I look at his eyes. That's the um, that's one with the black around, so that's a non-venomous. That's awesome. You're doing great, 100%. Exactly. Even though this one looks a little thick, it's puffed itself up. It's got those labial bars, and that's a non-venomous uh, uh, water snake, a Nerodia floridana. But this underscores the whole concept. If you're not sure, just leave them alone, you know, because they do look very similar. And what about that one? He's a friendly yeah. one. Friendly one as well, yeah. This one, notice it's on asphalt. It feels threatened, and they're taking a picture of it. It can't hide. It swells up its body and it flattens its head to make its head look triangular it's not venomous and it's got those labial bars or those stripes on the face that is a, a nerodia how about that he doesn't look very friendly i'm going to go for he's venomous that's right that's both you got a cotton mouth its eye and its fangs it's eating an, oh. a green a, a banded water snake here so that's kind of a gruesome picture. That's the non-venomous snake getting preyed upon by that cotton mouth. So you got pretty much 100%. That's very impressive. Good for you. Well, I'm really impressed. doesn't mean I like them anymore. anymore. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is part about knowing who they are and who they are. So, so we'll go through a little bit more. So the copperhead, not, in, not down in central South Florida. So you don't have to worry about that. The cotton mouth looks a lot like that. Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake, throughout the state, but it's really declined a lot. You're not likely to see one. Big body, diamonds, as the name implies, Eastern Diamondback, diamonds around the body, blocky head, rattle on the tail. This is one of the most venomous snakes in North America, and it's one that is, you have to be really concerned about. So, you know, with y'all being so important to me on this talk, I'm telling you, you do not ever want to get close to an Eastern Diamond. Just leave them alone. They're, they're a force to be reckoned with. But there's to the point they're probably are worthy of being considered an endangered species because we've persecuted them, we've killed them, we've destroyed their habitat. Timber rattlesnake also, I mentioned, just up in North Florida. Don't have to worry about that. Pygmy rattlesnake. This is a little snake, as the name implies, maybe 18 inches long tops. It's got these, uh, these sort of roundish, blocky, markings on the that are sort of looking focused along the back and then it's got these other markings along the side that sort of look blurry and it's got a little blocky head it's got a rattle as you can see there 
but you're not going to hear the rattle. It's so small, it would sound like an insect buzzing. This snake is so small, its venom is not that potent that, you know, you wouldn't want to get bitten by any of these, but you wouldn't have to worry about that one. But this one is also like the other ones. They don't do well in, in human modified air. Modified air. Where there's a lot of there's a lot. And then the coral snake. Different family of snakes. Family of snakes. Related to related cobra. Related to cobra. Occurs throughout the whole state. And the way I want you to know, because there's several, there's a couple species that look like coral snakes. There's this scarlet king snake, not venomous. Scarlet snake, not venomous. But I've come up with a way rather than yellow touches yellow, yellow touches red or black touches yellow. There's all these ways to remember. Think of a stoplight. Yellow, red, you stop. So in Florida and really North America, yellow, red, stop. So if the yellow markings touch the red markings, that means just stop. It's a coral snake. Notice in these non-venomous ones, the yellow touches black. Or in this case, this scarlet snake, the yellow or the creamy white touches black. So not venomous. So there are these ones that mimic the coral snake and they derive apparently some protection because of that. So, but coral snakes, small, they don't have those fangs. You don't have to worry about them so much. So those are the, you know, these are the relatively few out of the, all the 50 that you need to be concerned about, you know, and these, all these snakes, very important to me, very important to me to be talking about people, how to be safe around snakes and not persecute the non-venomous ones, really not persecute any of them. But I would understand if you had a a, a venomous snake in your yard and you and you decided to kill it. I wouldn't agree with it, but I wouldn't understand. So as we start to wrap up, do you really need to be worried about getting bitten by a venomous snake? I will say no, as long as you don't mess, the, mess with them. How do you reduce your chances? Don't mess with them. What should you do if you get bitten by a venomous snake or you're with someone? It's your phone. You call 911. That's your snake bite kit. That's it. You just call 911. And the chances of you succumbing are really, really low. So here's some statistics. No need to read all this, but there's a lot of people that get have venomous snake bites in the U.S. Most of them are there in the southwest uh, U.S., where there's a lot of uh, rattlesnakes. Very, very rare. This less than ten, this is usually around less than two deaths. So driving to work or just you know driving your golf cart across your community. That's more dangerous than, you know, than, than the snake. Or if you, hopefully if you smoke cigarettes, you'll quit after this. But, you know, lung cancer from cigarette smoke. Snake bites are way, way down there. And this will not be anyone in the group, present company included. Most of the venomous snake bites that the, the records show are young men and often alcohol intoxication. And I don't mean the snake has been drinking. I mean, those young idiot males have been drinking and it's like, hold my beer, watch this. So it's, it's people doing, you know, not, not making the best decisions around venomous snakes that are getting bitten. So it's not common. Touching the snake puts you in greater risk. And then not now, but the springtime of the year, really to now, but the time of year when, when it's warm and snakes are most active, you have to worry, but by and large, you really don't need to worry. But if you are worried, if you're really paranoid, you could put up a, a berry in your yard. You want to keep this, the habitat that's, that's conducive or attractive to snakes down, like no long, you know, not a long, ve long vegetation, no, uh, no piles of brush. I have brush piles in my yard because I want to attract wildlife. But if you don't want snakes, you kind of, you know, want a sterile kind of yard, you know, trim your shrubs up, et cetera, et cetera. If you're out doing gardening, wearing gloves or jeans and closed toed shoes is always a, always a good idea. But Really, unless you're messing with a venomous snake, the odds you getting bitten are extremely, extremely small. So, and there's some things you can do to avoid it. So, you know, also another thing, I, I got to put this in there. I don't, I'm not going to show this video, but do not pick up a dead venomous snake. People I know, you know, maybe not y'all, but driving along the road, a dead venomous snake, pick it up, move it out of the road or something that they can have a bite reflex for a while. So you don't want to, you don't want to do that. Uh but, you know, it's, it's again, it's a safety thing. It's You just don't mess with them. They don't mess with you. But in the very unlikely event that you do get bitten or some someone you're with gets bitten, this is it. It's you just call, you know, you call 911. This is a thing now that won't be too much longer. I won't even be able to show this. It's antiquated. But y'all probably remember, like I do, these sort of cutter snake bite kits that you'd buy at a hardware store to have a little blade in it, have suction cups. These do not work. They don't take venom out and you're prolonging your time nowadays to get to care 
and you're likely to get more necrotic. So if you get bitten, get away from the snake. You don't need to bring it to the doctor with you. You, you could clean the area, but don't wait to get, you know, to get care for that. Assure the person if you have a, take a watch or rings off because of the sight would swell, but it's so unlikely, you know, don't wait. This is the important thing. Don't wait to say, oh, I'm feeling okay. Let's see what happens. You know, don't, don't do that. Don't try to suck out the venom. You know, don't, you don't need to bring the snake with you. Just get medical care as quick as you can. But this isn't the extremely unlikely event that this would even happen. So those are the things you just call 911, but you don't mess with a snake. You don't get bitten. Right. So as closing, we got a lot of snakes in Florida. Very few of them are venomous and are even a potential threat to people, all right? It's not many. Where you guys are, there's four of them. And you're very unlikely to ever in the whole living down there that you, you, you might see a cottonmouth. If you're lucky, you would see a coral snake. But it's not likely, you know? I think it's easy to identify them a little bit of practice. The chance of getting a bitten are really, really small. Snakes are important in the environment, predators and prey. You know, so it, snakes are really neat animals. So, you know, I I don't know if I've done anything to dispel your fears, but at least you know if something was to happen. Same thing with your pet. If you have a pet, a dog that gets bitten or a cat, you just call call your vet and take the animal in for care. And the chances of, you know, the animal succumbing are, are, are really low, too. It's going to be expensive, but, uh, you know, snakes are really neat animals, as my friends down here like the show, holding their snakes. So, uh yeah, snakes are cool. That's my, my sort of upshot there. So if, you know, I appreciate you guys listening and uh, we can talk turtles, manatees, alligators, something the next time, if you're keen for it, for it we can talk more can about, talk more about question answer time. So um, thank you. Um, my question is, I'm just going to stop here. My question thank you. is, um, how do you pick up a snake? Let's say a non-venomous one. So are, are they going to run from you? Are they going to like squiggle in your hands? How do we like go? Slightly uh, pick would up try it? to get away. But you think about it. so snakes are long and thin. If you grab a snake by its head, uncomfortable because its body's hanging. The best way to hold a snake is giving its body support. You know, so I'll do this like a baby. You know, if you handle a newborn, you got to support that newborn everywhere. You know, you don't pick it up by its butt or just its head. Same with a snake. You got to support it because it'll droop and that makes the snake feel more comfortable. You know, if you go to grab it harsh, it's going to feel threatened. So just gently picking it up, you know, but if you see one, you know, on the road or in your yard, you want to get out of the way, just get, you know, a stick or a broom and just, it's going to take a little bit to, you know, to coerce it to go the way you want, but just do that. You know, bottom line though, if you're not sure what you're handling, just don't even bother picking it up or just leave it alone. It'll eventually probably basking in the sun and it'll move on and go about its, go about its business. <laughs> so that's what anybody I here that, so is anybody here Glenn Eagles, Eagles um, uh, seen a snake in her backyard I mean I know we just saw a coral snake in the in one of our oh. yards so we're kind oh, of wow. and I see tons of black snakes anybody here see snakes no anybody right. Mr. Robin I think Barbara garter snakes that's it Gar yeah the pretty one. Pretty one. And the black racers that uh, uh, Tammy was Tammy mentioning, was mentioning, they're uh, they're uh, interesting about interesting them. They're about long, them. And, they're thin long and, dark, and thin and dark, but when they're but young, when they're young, thin and they're thin, great, and they're great spots, all spots all over them. All over them. They look totally they look different totally than the adults. So you've probably seen the young ones, Tammy, and thought it was something different. The young or, what? Okay, the young black snakes. They look oh. different than the adults. Oh, okay. Well, they're still yeah, they, black and they're long and they, they move, they move pretty fast and they're yeah, always and they're, underneath our hedges. Yeah. They're out there looking for those, uh, those brown moles or those lizards they see running around or frogs. That's what they'll be feeding on. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. Robin, I know you wanted to, um, if anybody, does anybody else have any questions on these um, snakes? I know Mr. Robin had questions about crocodiles and alligators. Yeah, we can talk about crocs and alligators real quick, if, but happy to talk about snakes more. Anybody else have any questions about snakes or sh shall we, do you mind uh, everybody if we talk a little bit about gators? We still have about 10 more minutes. Is that cool? Okay. All right. So Mr. Robin, you are up. 
Did you have a, sir, did you have a specific question or you just want to talk about alligators and crocodiles in Florida and sort of why, I think you mentioned why are they here or something like that. I'm trying to get him to unmute so you can talk. No, you have to unmute yourself, sir. I think he was asking what's, what's the difference? I mean, why, you know, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Wait, wait. Right, let's go ahead. I was, I was just curious because I don't know of any other place in the world that has both of species together. So I thought there was something interesting or unique about us that we could do that or that we could well, host them. I, I would just say there are the, the family that the alligators in is called Alligatoridae, and that includes caimans and, and some other crocodilians. But the only other uh, uh, crocodilian in the genus alligator is an animal that's in China, oddly enough. So it goes back to, you know, long time ago, te you know, uh, continents, plate tectonics moving. But so there's only two places in the world where is there, where is there's the Chinese alligator and the American alligator. And I don't, I think the Chinese alligator is too far north to have crocodiles. Crocodiles tend to be a little more uh, tropical in their distribution. And the, the American crocodile, which we have, we only have a small part of its overall range throughout the Caribbean. I think it's central and some South American countries. It only gets as far north as, as South Florida. And then the uh, the alligator is more of a temperate uh, adapted animal. It likes, you know, in general, a little cooler weather. So it's it goes as far north as like North Carolina on the on the East Coast, all around the, you know, the, 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 the southeastern coastal plain and as far west as uh, as Texas, but not across the, the Rio Grande River. That's like a border right there. So it's a southern type thing but it's more temperate and it gets into South Florida. So it's kind of a unique situation where we have a tropical adapted, cro tropical adapted crocodile that just edges the top of its range up into Florida. And we've got this more temperate adapted, you know, cooler weather adapted alligator that the Southern part of its range goes into the Southern part of Florida. And that's where they overlap. So it just happens to be a, a climate thing and the species that, th that they're here. And there's a great yeah. And what and what's the difference? But is there a significant difference between them? That their their, their biology is largely the same. Crocodiles tend to, or at least the American crocodile will usually dig it. It'll dig a hole to lay its eggs. It'll do both. Like American alligator digs a big mound of uh, vegetation, lays its eggs in there. They all feed on a bunch of different things. The crocodile, it's very exaggerated here, but the crocodile tends to be more gray with alli the alligators are a little more uh, black or brown here. The, the snout of an alligator is wider. And I'm, I'm at the University of Florida. We do the gator chomp, you know, when we're going against another team. What we should be doing is like our top to be going over the bottom teeth because alligators have an overbite where crocodiles, when their mouth is closed, their teeth lock together. Uh, but that's about it, you know, for all intents and purposes, they do the same thing, although the uh, the alligator is inland and in pretty much any body of water, but also near the coast where the American crocodile is more uh, salt tolerant and it's you, it's only near the coast. And if you want to see the both of them together, pretty much you have to go to South Florida. So a little bit about the, you know, the, the narrower snout and the crocodile, the interlocking teeth. And the overbite and the wider the wider snout in the in the alligator, and and then they're you know alligator more can deal with cooler temperatures and the crocodile with warmer temperatures. But they're both really unique animals. The American the American crocodile, I believe, in the U.S. is is listed as endangered, where the alligator I still think is threatened. You know, because back in the you know up until the 1970s, American alligators were you know until the Endangered Species Act, they were they were on the verge of extinction because they've been overhunted and persecuted. These days, we've got so many uh, so many alligators that we have a, a whole program of the state where there's licensed trappers that go out if they're a nuisance and they collect them. They don't go release them. They'll harvest them for their meat and their skin. And sometimes it's a big animal for the skull. So because we have nuisance alligators, it's odd to look at this, but that's kind of a success story that we've done such a good job protecting them that they're all over the place now. And, and so they I don't, don't they, they don't breed together. I mean, that one uh, an alligator and crocodile won't won't. No, they'll be a behavioral out. thing, probably biologically, you know, but no, they're not they're not hybridizing. So that's a little bit about crocodiles and alligators. Thank you. I appreciate that extra. You're welcome. Inclusion.
Anytime. And American alligators, neat. they have really unique behavior. They're actually kind of, when it comes to uh, making more alligators mating, they're kind of touchy and tender where a male will like lay its snout on top of the female, they rub on each other. They also do, you know, court, they do some bellowing and this, they have a, 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 a vibration through the body that's below our, our level to hear the, the, uh, the, the, the frequency and the water just, it's called the water dance. It dances around their back. So they're really unique organs. Alligators are the most vocal reptile and they're really kind of like a big bird. You know, they have a lot of interesting behaviors and, you know, and they've been around since the time of the dinosaurs. Crocodilians are really spectacular animals. I mean, we got to give them respect, obviously, because they're, they're big and, and, uh, you know, potentially harmful, but the number of alligator attacks, lethal attacks on people since the 40s has been only like 50 people, you know. So, again, I say, all right, your stats, same with snakes or alligators, it's low chances. But still, it's a little more, I don't know, uh, it doesn't freak me out as much to think I could die in a car crash as I could get, get you know, taken by an alligator when I was out canoeing a, a river up here in Gainesville. But also, it's kind of exciting. So, neat yeah. animals. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, does anybody else um, have anything to discuss or want Dr. Uh, Johnson to discuss? No? Well, I'm going to stop the recording and um, I'm, I appreciate you uh, stopping by everybody. And yes, I thank you, you for being here. And I hope you enjoyed it, everyone. And, and if Mrs. you guys want to talk about guys. That, bufo, that bufo toad, I think would be worthwhile to talk about that animal is there. It's a potential threat to your, it's more of a threat to you because of your pets than any venomous snake would be. They're so just that's something I would like to talk about at some point. So the Bufu frogs, the Bufu, how do you Bufo. pronounce them? Bufo or the, it's the cane toad. Let's call it the cane toad. The cane yeah. toad. All right. yeah. So great. Well then um, everybody, if you're interested, let me know if you want to be, a, I should have like a committee just to decide what we should speak about on Sundays. Um, you know, because it, it would be fun. And if it's anything animal related that I can do, I have colleagues, I can help hook you up with stuff. So, you know, and I, I would be happy to come down for a talk if, you know, we knew we'd have a good turnout, we get some good interaction and, you know, I love, I love doing this kind of thing, you know, the, the uh -huh. wild. That, yeah. my, 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 I love it too. My, Mrs. Kavanaugh, what would you like? Yeah, it's cool. I found it very interesting because I'm very happy to know that most of the snakes in Florida are non-venomous yeah. and that there are only four to six that we have, actually four that we have to worry about down here. Correct. And um, I, it sort of narrows the sphere for me. Totally. Another thing, <laughs> speaking of only this, I could come and talk about the non-native reptiles, these ones that have been introduced mainly for the pet trade. We have so many of those. Like a python is, is one example, so I could talk about that too. So right. yeah, I got I got a lot of a lot of topics, Tammy. Tammy, I'd love to share with you and the rest of you here if you if you want to have me back. Well, good. We could give him his own series, you know, his, his <laughs> wildlife. <laughs> you know, you. remember we used to do that. Di Walt, what, what Disney World wildlife? I forgot what it was on Sunday nights. We could have we could have our own um, wildlife expert. So everybody, thank you. Mrs. North, I hope that you enjoyed it. And, you know, I'm still not a fan of snakes, but I feel right. a little bit better, except that I did just see a coral snake the other night. And hopefully that's it for my. Uh, and this, Tam, Tammy, coral snakes are generally more active this time of year and they spend most of their time underground. So, yeah, but I guess because we have, I guess we, you know, when people start uh, digging up their bushes and doing landscaping, that, that will just serve them. Yeah, they'll move around, then I would think so. Yes, in North Carolina, we had um, we had just rattlesnakes on the golf courses. Just, and stuff. just don't don't mess with them. Don't pick them up. Don't try to kill them because you put yourself <laughs> in danger. Leave them alone, and you're going to be fine. Oh yeah, that's what it is. It or, gives us a heart attack just looking at them, right? Or if you I, keep seeing the same coral snake again, give it a name. Oh, they're scarlet or whoever, you know. That's a coral <laughs> snake. We don't we don't talk. We don't mess with each other. We okay. let the snake go their way. We go our way. I do like the idea of naming our pets, our 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 visitors. You know, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, good night, right. everybody. Thank you very much. Um, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.